Hi, I'm Pilar Kuhn, and this is Podcasts, Pilar and the World of Dogs. And today, I'm going to show you how you might go about removing mats from a dog that has long hair, like my dog Garrison. So today I'm going to show you about a dog like Garrison that has a bunch of hair. He's a double-coated breed. He has a soft undercoat and a harsh outer coat, and it can get matted. Matting is not comfortable for the dog, and you don't necessarily like to pet your dog either when they're full of a bunch of mats. So I'm going to show you some ways that you can go about removing these mats from your dog. Now Garrison has a lot of hair. It's because I keep him in coat so I can show you guys things on podcasts, but he's also a show dog, semi-retired at this point. Uh, but this is one of the things that I like about my Bouviers is keeping them in coat. But I'm going to show you a couple of things you can do to help remove mats. There are a couple of key places to check for mats, but it can happen all over the dog. Some key places are here behind the elbows, here in the groin, and especially underneath their stomach. Also, in this dog, he can get mats up in his beard, both on the sides and underneath. So, the first thing I usually do is I'll take a force dryer, which blows a lot of fast air, and I can blow through the coat, and I can actually see where it's clumped up. I call them spider webs. When I find them, I take a slicker brush and I take the hair and I'll brush it up and I'll loosen the hairs that way. It doesn't get the mat out, but then I'll take a comb and I'll comb through very gently from the ends until the mat's completely free and I can run my comb all the way through. Now some people say, why does my dog get matted? Well, I have curly hair. My hair gets matted. If I don't keep it combed out on a daily basis, it'll get into clumps of mats. So, not like my dog, however, but they do turn into little knots. So I do the same thing to my dogs that I do to my own hair. I start at the ends and I slowly work it out and loosen them up. Because it hurts on my head. I can only imagine when I'm working on a dog how it might hurt in those really sensitive areas. Don't want them to get mad at you and hurt, because it, it hurts. It just, it hurts. So I've shown you two tools you can use to help remove mats, a slicker brush and a comb. But there's one other tool that you can use, but use sparingly, it's called a mat breaker. It has a bunch of different blades on it, like razors, and it goes through and it actually cuts the hair. So for example, on Garrison, if I take this and I go through, you'll see that it starts to pull some hair out. Well, it gets down underneath the guard hairs and pulls that undercoat. When you have a mat, you can go through and try to rip those hairs out, but be careful because these are blades and if you get too close to the skin, it can cut the dog and then you run the risk of hot spots. I've done it myself. So anyway, those are great ways you can go about removing mats from your dog and it helps keep their skin healthy and their coat healthy. They look better, they feel better, so do you. I'm Pilar Kuhn and this is Podcast, Pilar in the World of Dogs.